First, I want to thank you to give me this opportunity. And my purpose today is to take you something that could be very positive or that could be very shocking, both ways. I am working on this, on the US-China economic war. It has direct implications for India. And I will also support the basic idea the Honorable Minister said, because he's talking in Davos, I'm sitting in the boardrooms. So I get to see what's working, what's not working, with the personal observations, what's happening. I have an objective to get your help. As I take you through, I'll give you the information, and then I'd like you to have participation from you and say, Ram, this is what you're missing. And then I will propose what the government of India needs to do. This is outside in, this is not inside out. And so I have a lot of limitations to go after. So the first thing, uh, is it on? Okay, just a second. Am I coming out clearly there? The voice coming out? If not, could you please stop me? Because if the information doesn't reach, I'm wasting your time. So we have to be able to communicate. <clears throat> we did test it, by the way, this morning. So <laughs> I want you to know that. We did that. Okay, if we don't get it, let's get going, okay? And I'll cover it. The first thing I'd like you to think with me, to go beyond VUCA to the age of discontinuity. The a oh, good. Here we go. You can read my handwriting. Let me repeat, because I'm going to give you examples. We have entered the age of discontinuity with permanent breaks. First, I will give you the current examples, then I will take you through the future examples. All of you know what Tesla has done to the automotive industry? That is a break in every way. Do you recall from history when the iPhone came? It's not just substitution Nokia. It created a total break. Today, iPhone people have healthcare. We have email. We have this. We have that. So the idea in our mindset is to think about, it's a discontinuity, it's an almost permanent break, and therefore, we have to have an agile mind to rethink our vision, of our strategy, and our business model. We have entered that, continuing to do that. More to come. Now, this morning, there's an announcement from EU. And the announcement is they're going to have a regulation for the garment industry that they are going to be responsible for excess inventory and that the garment used by the consumer, what happens to it? One of the very large garment manufacturers had anticipated that. It is causing 
a discontinuity and permanent break in the model. What is it? This garment manufacturer decided to airship from China and Vietnam to the United States. The cost, everybody with me, cost. But the new model is that from 45 days, it now takes two days. And you're going to have with those two days better forecasting, fresher product, less discounting, less cash in the pipeline, less insurance risk that comes from there. That has started. Did I come out clearly? So I want to tell you a personal story which I'm very lucky to work with people like you and your colleagues. And sometimes you get that insight that comes out when you talk to each other. So one day in 1995, I was in New Orleans and coming down from the 40th floor in the Hyatt Regency. And at 34th floor, Jack Welsh enters. He's shorter than I am. He knows me well. I work for him. And I say, Jack, good morning. No answer. Good morning. No answer. Now, I am saying, you know how many thoughts go through your mind? Uh, did I do anything wrong? Is he mad at me? He knows me well. Then he says, Ram, what's new? And I said, Jack, zero working capital. He says, never heard of it. You're trying to sell me consulting? I said, Jack, I never did. Door opens. Buy you a cup of coffee. G guys are staying outside. You, you really mean zero working capital? I said, yeah. Who does it? I said, Mano. Who the hell is Mano? I said, CEO runs a company. Ah, what's the name? I said, you want me to arrange a meeting? He said, hell no. I get a call from Mano, he said, what the hell did you tell Jack Welsh? I said, zero working capital. He said, yeah, we do that. So Jack went to see him with an executive, and he spent six hours with Mano. What do you think he was doing in six hours? Six hours is an eternity with him. Drilling, drilling, drilling. And Mano is the same way. Mano Kamporis was the CEO of American Standard. He figured this out, how to do that. So about six weeks later, Jack calls me up and he says, I hear you're going to give a presentation to his team. I say, yeah. He said, you know how to arrange the table. I've never arranged a table for anybody. I called Mano. I said, Mano, Jack called. He said, I want you to arrange the table. He said, yeah, we will have an elliptical table, my management team, all the nice stuff. I said, no, 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 no. He said, what do you mean? I said, I want you to put on one side the plant manager from Brazil and one from Hanover, Germany. The low cost and the high cost. Plant manager is the key point in the zero working capital. And I said, he's going to be here 90 minutes. And 80 minutes, he will talk to these guys. And he will go. So he got all the details. About four weeks later, he rents a 727, put all his plant managers across the globe, put a school at the Crotonville, and he saved $5 billion hard cash. Now, why do I tell you this? I go back to my experience in the elevator. What is new? Make that habit to search every day. What is new? New to you. It may not be new to the world. Keep searching. And if you keep searching, you will find the seeds of tomorrow exist today. 
And this is a very critical part. Once we know the seeds of tomorrow exist today, you can then see which way the discontinuity is going to evolve. Am I coming out clearly on this? The Tesla thing, it was that day when the car rolled out and that day Schwarzenegger, governor of, of California, got the publicity, should the other CEOs have seen it? And Elon Musk took that idea to Rick Wagner and General Motors. And look how far we have come to figure this out. So this age of discontinuity is continuing. Look at each industry. We have talked to auto industry. We have other things that Shalil mentioned that. But look at those, how this structure is going to change. So that's the first part I want to take you through. And then I want to take you through the experience. So in the last decade, I've spent time in China, gone through 50 companies. I'm on the board of the Chinese company, a large one today. Then I went to ZTE, full budgets and everything, looking at it. These are coaching of Baidu. You heard of Baidu? JD.com. Huawei, they still have called me to do some work for them. So I get to learn what's happening inside. So I'm going to give you some assumptions that are wrong on the outside about China. Because when you go inside and see the budgets, then you really know what's really, really happening there. So I began to talk to the CEOs in America. And I have a number of these people who allow me to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, go to their house. So I went to one, and I said, uh, do you know that you serve at the mercy of the CCP? So what do you mean? I said, on the company board I am, the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, the guy sits on my left. Brilliant. Everything I say is recorded. His SOE owns 5%. And the day you don't give them what they want, everybody got it? Number two, a state owned enterprise. The day you don't give the technology, second item, once they have built the company of size, of global nature, you're out. Number one, J anybody heard of John Deere? I talked to the chairman of John Deere. It's marginalized. Telephone infrastructure. It used to be AT&T, Lucent, Alstom, then Nokia, Siemens, then Nokia. Nokia is now marginalized. Ericsson is marginalized. So I went to one of them, and they said, yeah. So one guy said to me, we're scratching our head. What do we do? This is the second largest market for many of these companies. Heard of Qualcomm? Yes. Heard of Amway? Second largest. Heard of Volkswagen? The largest. So I'm sitting in a meeting in 2007 or so with uh, uh, Jeffy Melt in GE and the discussion is going on, should we give technology to China? Without GE and without Honeywell, they can't build the aeroplane. And so we're rationalizing. At that time, the assumption was that China friendly, things will go forward, so on. So Jeff said, I have a choice. I give them no technology, they will become number one in the world and they will compete with us. Or I take 49%, be a bigger pie and be able to play the game. Nobody knew that assumption 
will be turned over its head. So we have a large number of companies who have a large dependence on the Chinese market. Now, here is the first point. There is a deliberate Chinese strategy, which I'll show you in a minute, to get market access of China in exchange for technology and help them build your own dominant global competitor. Did I come on clearly? You got it? No? They will keep you in China until you give them the technology. Not enough. Even if you don't, unless you're a very small company, they're building their company, and when you get there, you're marginalized. Everybody got that? So as one of the people talked to me privately, he said, Ram, we are creating our own executioner, which is true. So that's another one. I'll give you one in the boardroom. So in this boardroom, I'm not a board member, but I go there. This $10 billion company, president, COO, a CEO, and he's a hired hand in a family company, he makes a presentation to put $100 million plant in China, in Shanghai, with an SOE partnership. And he says, we can recoup this in four years. Makes a very persuasive case. It makes a lot of sense. And one board member who had worked in China asked the same question. He said, number one, if you give it to the Shanghai SOE, they will give it to the whole China. How long do you think it will take for them to take you out? The board declined the investment. Choice India. So they asked me a couple of companies, and I gave them some names to say, you work it through. So here, the key word is that Russia-Ukraine war has really lit the fire in the American executives what we're going to do. Volkswagen has announced that we will stop chasing market share, we will stop chasing volume. We're going to redesign the strategy, and they will, over time, going to get out, over time. So here, then it became clear that in the economic war, what is China's strategy? I'm going to give you a capsule of it. I'm writing in the book very extensively what is China's economic strategy is. It is the only country that I know, there may be more, that has an explicit, brilliant, well-executed foreign economic policy, economic strategy. India doesn't have it, as far as I know. I know for sure America doesn't have it. Europe doesn't have it. Only they have it, so let me take you through that. Please reach the goal very carefully. Everything I have is verifiable and observable. I may not know all the facts, but what you have here are facts. The first one, not only in China, they want autocracy and one-party rule in the whole world. Let their people reflect on this. And second is append the American dollar as a reserve currency. Movement has begun. If the dollar reserve currency gets lost, what do you think will happen? 
We still have time, which I'll give you some time limits. And they have declared it to America-based democratic process must be replaced. That's the goal. President Xi is alive. He is going to be in the next term. That's his speculation. What I want people to know is not President Xi. It is coming down, and a gentleman named Doshi is an Indian, and he is now in the national security apparatus in Washington. He did the whole study from Deng to show this has been the strategy from day one. President Xi has lifted it. They have become bold. They now got the strength. And that is why you're coming out this thing very explicitly. So while he's carrying it out, it has been, it has been coming from Deng's days going forward. That's the goal. Does it have any meaning for us? We've got to think about it. Now, five building blocks. I just chose five. There are actually nine building blocks. Building block number one, accumulate hard currency. Today, they have 3.4 trillion of the currency, and America owns, uh, owes 1.4 trillion. This is hard cash. You heard the thing before, who has the money has the power? Is that fair? And that 3.4 trillion is increasing by roughly 500 billion a year. Your guess is better than mine when it gets to 10 trillion, will they have a power to do things they can't do today? Is this making sense to you guys? These are facts. I didn't make them up. I'm going to come about India in a few minutes. How do they do that? Trade surplus. Trade surplus. So trade surplus against America, against Europe. They have trade surplus from almost 150 countries. Only once is the raw materials, energy. 150 countries are indebted to China. They owe money to China. And this is their strategy, by the way. Very deliberate, very clearly planned. The second strategy is capturing all the routes to the markets of the world. I've come to call it encircling like Mao, Mao, Mao used to have. You heard of the Belt Road Initiative? They now have the railroad from northeast of China to Europe in 16 days. It's working. Take the whole route. They control their logistics. They also use our logistics, but we are not allowed to use their logistics. To go to the Pacific coast, they are building a port in Lima, Peru. They have 94 ports. They have now underground cables to control the data flow, telecommunications flow. So they control their whole logistics. How many of us heard who controls the customer controls the business? Very meticulously planned going forward. They have given $385 billion to these 150 countries. So am I clear the encircling strategy? Lots of details are all factual. You can find out. Number three, they now have these roughly 105 countries. These countries owe them. So standard setting is very critical. Telecommunications, global standards. There is no better way to enter a country than to build their in telecommunication infrastructure. They've been here for a long time. Do that. 
And so here, they got these countries in this standard setting. They are now going to have a block voting so that the American designated people are not in power. This has begun in the 5G standards. It's still the American system, but over time, it's going to change. The next one is the diversionary strategy. They, when Mr. President Trump got angry with the Europeans, the Chinese went in, created a negotiations, and created a pact that the EU should be investing money with China. President Biden came in power in time. It has been tabled. Russia-Ukraine war, we can argue this. My sense is it's a diversionary technique. It's, it's resulting in diversion because resources are going in. The time concentration is away from the Chinese part of it. It's a diversionary, diversionary thing. And then you have the fear, you know that, uh, President Xi is very clear that anybody who's found to prevent China's progress, Australia, they made a remark and they got the import of coal and the iron ore. That's going on. I have advised every single client in America, do not send your executives to China. Commit no such error. Canada, my clients, and in America, no way. I'm on the board of another company where we're not going to put a plant of manufacturing. They got, begin to realize what's really happening. Now, so here, this is the simpler version of a Chinese strategy. What do you guys think? There are more facts. I just want you to know that. I've just not done that. We'll process that. America, I'm not going into the detail. I want to mention to you one thing. And we need to capitalize on it in India. Where do you think the most technological research is done? In America, I mean. Who does it? California. California. Mm -hmm. The Silicon Valley, yeah. How many of you heard a name D-E-R-P-A, DARPA? How many of you heard Lawrence Livermore Laboratory? How many of you heard of Alamo? These are eight government highly secured labs. The major technology is developed there that goes to these commercial companies. And then those joint ventures are licenses, commercialized, and they go to the outside world. That's a real jewel of America, where they have 20 years later kind of technologies being delivered. And that's what they want in, in the other countries where we're really going. There are lots of good things in America. I'm not doing it here. I just want to show that. And so here, you have a China strategy, which is very explicit. It's very clear. Now, here you see <clears throat> a new level of competition. We competed one company against another, correct? We compete industry to industry, aluminum versus steel, plastics. Now, I have been company competing against several industries. Amazon competing with lots of industries. Now, we have a company competing against a nation, and that is China. Sing singly targeted. Subsidies, taxes, all that stuff. Now, in my mind, it has begun. <clears throat> I believe, I'm predicting here, this is not a fact yet, but I believe this is what's going to happen. And that is, we're going to have two spheres of competition. 
One, the Chinese orbit, Venezuela, Russia, you know the countries, you can figure that out. And we go, go back to prior to 2007, 2000 is a very big date, but I'll tell you why. Until 2007, we were a globalization company, country, a globalization American process. And then China begins to export 2007. And then this whole thing began to change under the president. So I begin to see a globalization on the left side. I am saying I could be wrong. No country will be self-sufficient on its own, ever. Chinese think they can, we'll have to see. But that's a supposition, that's not a fact. So there is going to be a globalization on the left side. It is going to happen in certain ways. And we have to protect the dollar side and the democratic side of it. Now, having said that, <clears throat> I come to India. India. Do we owe money to China? You want to take a guess how much money we owe to China cumulatively last 20 years? 22 years? Take a guess. Nobody's going to be embarrassed. I know I'm cheating. I've done my homework. You know that. It's fair. But Emotional feeling about it. What's your guess? How much? Two billion. Two billion. Mm -hmm. Take a, sorry, I beg your pardon. How much? 500 billion, you close. It is 638 billion. Zero cent. Dollar, 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 dollar. India. Yeah, India owes up to fiscal 21 or so, you can say one year, $638 billion to China. Net deficit. I'm not shocking you, I'm just giving you facts. Take a guess what was the deficit last year. Seventy billion. Seventy billion. Increasing. So six hundred and thirty-eight now. And if we did nothing, what do you think in five years it will happen? So in a cumulative five years, it will be a trillion. What's our GDP now? Three trillion. And what rate do you want to assume? Seven percent? In five years, that's 450. 4.5. On a 4.5, you own a, we owe China a trillion dollars. What do you think? Let me repeat that. We have 638 now. Last year, fiscal, 70. It's increased, by the way. If we do nothing, in five years, that's 350, isn't it? Give and take. A total of a trillion. Our GDP is 3 trillion. At 7% growth, that's 450, 4.5. What do you think about the condition? Say it again. No, 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 it's hard cash. Yes, but that currency is the powder. No, but we don't, it's not a loan. No, I just want you, I'll take you separately. I've debated that with the Treasury. I said they have the power. They're buying that military equipment with that money. And they're giving the money to those other countries. 
Oh, yes. They just react to me like this. I said, no, get some facts. Talk to the Reserve Bank. Get some facts. Even if I go your way, how do you feel? That also means that India's foreign exchange, which is also mainly <laughs> tied to the dollar. It's liability. Liability. Oh, wow. We haven't earned that, right? Exactly. So we are also in debt. That's the key point. That is the key point. And then the extent of debt. Say it again, please. So when we import, there's a trade deficit link, right? So companies or government who import pay for that import. They don't. They give them the <coughs> trade line. No, but pay through the currency of your country. Right. And they the control the that. Or dollar. Watch over, yeah. Which are you do do that? So you haven't paid China 680 million. Yeah, yeah. Say it again, please. I mean, we paid them the money. We're using hard currency to buy other things and whatever, right? Yeah, do We're that. paying our hard currency. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's not a debt. No, 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 we pay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they control that power. Yeah, sure. And when I stipulate that, you see what happens. I say, what do you want to do? So what's the priority? Don't, don't get depressed. <laughs> That's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. And so, <clears throat> first, um, I have some suggestions too, so it's not just, I have some suggestions too, so it's not just, just creating depression around here. You, know, you don't do that, you don't do that. So I want you to, to think about a couple of things. That why the minister, Mr. Goyal, getting that positive feedback because the same thing in the boardroom I'm in America, they're saying, we got to get out of China. Supply chain issue that the chairman of Maruti mentioned, Mr. Bhargava. And so where do we go? We want to go to India. So I met the person in charge of supply chain for Apple. Anybody heard of a place called Borelli? He's from Borelli. He and I speak the same Urdu. And you know, Apple has begun to move in here, get the parts made here, and do that. And they're building their new model. Because in China, they had large operations. We don't have enough talent trained here. Expensive equipment, do that. What's happening? So please discuss it at your table, one single question. I'd like to get some input from you. That, what should India do regarding China? Stay with the trade side of it. Not political, just trade side of it. Stay with that. What should India do, if anything, or do nothing, regarding trade with China? And I've been on record. There will be time when there will be a dispute about water. And see what kind of a trump they will use, if any, as they go forward. And that, that is going, that's, that's their, one of their trump cards to go after. So take a couple of minutes, do some. I just want you to assume that the, the key is that I have the data. The 638 billion, we really owe them in some way. Owe them in a We haven't paid for it. Yeah, yeah. We haven't paid. They paid. No, we have paid, not we have paid. Yeah, yeah. We, we have paid. Then yeah, yeah. If you've paid 680 billion, how, why do you owe them 680 billion? Yeah, just assume that. Let me get on. Just, because I've gone through this debate in America to a 3.4 trillion. But, 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 the, but, but has it been. Conceptually clear, logically clear. I mean, that's the so logic is that we have been incurring trade deficit with them. Trade deficit, uh, okay. And they're having the IOUs in some fashion. That's what you. And then you 70 billion last year. Trade deficit. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So please take a minute, talk to each other. What should India do? Give us some ideas. What should India do regarding China? Stay with trade. Don't go political. Okay. Have a little talk. 
Say, what should India do? That you don't get depressed. Talk to each other. Talk to, I'll get it from everybody. Okay? Talk to each other. Let it go. Yeah. Talk to each other, then I'll get it. Okay? Get a feeling for it. <clears throat> but there are solutions that. Say it again. Well, that's one of the major ones. There's no other way. And it's a good thing for us. It's not a negative thing. Then we say, how do we do that? Yeah, please go ahead. Meaning we're exporting iron ore, we're exporting a lot of commodities to China, which we should be using domestically. Inside. And exporting. And you got these few things. Few things, not 5,000 things. Because the nature of exports is a large, large, large. Exports to China a lot to do with commodities. Uh, and they're, they're going to play a game with the commodity. And they're just trying to... Also some critical things like uh, FBI of chemicals and farmers should all be made in India. India. But in the case of Australia, you know, they, they just announced in China they're going to do government buying for their everything from Ch Australia. They're going to? Australia thinks they buy the government control the buying, Chinese government controls the buying of things from Australia as one unit. And say, so monopsony will take place. And they announce it too, so then we say whom they're going to sell, cut price. That's the power of it. Yeah, go. In, uh, but the Indian companies don't have market access in China. That's Indian companies don't have market access to China, that's correct. The total export last year from India to China is 24 billion. And they are commodities largely. That's not going to work. Well, it's not an access issue. It's the fact that we don't have the product. What are we saying? We don't have it. No, no, it's a very fair point. So what is the urgency? I believe I concur. I don't say you're right. I've got to say I concur with you. <laughs> because we both can be wrong. We're going to build a supply chain here. And that's number one priority. And I would suggest we should think and disagree with me supply chain of those items that we need urgently, and they come from China. That's more important than reducing deficit with some other country. Is that important? So I go to second step. Second step is to build supply chain here do we need some technologies from places other than China? Investments. You know what I mean? Hmm? Because they're friendly countries. Go. We need the engineering know-how. Engineering know-how. Manufacturing know-how. And investment. Go. Hang on. Okay, so I, I'll repeat myself. I think it's really about not uh, India reducing its import from China as the solution. The real problem would lie when China would block its exports to India. China will block? Its exports to India. Exports to India? Yeah. I, we, it could be. I don't, I don't want to rule that out. Because but uh, we need to build this gentleman's solution. Supply chain in India of the things that link with this whole discussion. We need what? We need technology, engineering know-how, and maybe some money. So now I come to my second point. We must have a strategy and priorities what those things are. 
And then we got to market to the people from whom we want help. And that will be a joint work of the industry and the government. Government can create environment, but they can't do the negotiation. We have to do that. Just like you people raise funds, you have to market to the fund givers. We have to market, we have to sell, we've got to create a strategy, we've got to figure it out what is, what is going to be here. And we should actually think about, especially business and the government together, don't do the whole thing, pick five, six items. So you build credibility, you create confidence, you go at it, and really focus that as a very urgent priority. What do you guys think of those two ideas? They're your ideas. I concur with it. So what will happen once it is created? What strategy then China will adopt? Like yeah, I've India. got that action reaction gaming. I've got all that gaming. Is they going to react? But there will be some other reasons for it. No question about that. Otherwise, we're saying we have so much fear, we can't do anything. And that's not allowed. We can't say that, otherwise, we say we've sunk, we can't do that, correct? May I pose a so question the to you, sir? Sorry, somebody said something, yeah. So China's game was always pricing, right? And it could give those prices because of... Ah, thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Now I come to my going into the budgets of these guys. Their currency parity was 450 in 1999. It's 680 now. Yen used to be 70, 122 or something now. Now, if you begin to see the currency parity, they are uncomparative. We may not be able to do anything, it's fair. But saying their price is a reflection of competitiveness is not correct. The way they sort of paid their labor force, which was they had a surplus of labor force and they could give those cheap wages and could leverage that. No, no, no. They're, they're very high cost inside. Look at the wages. I see the budgets. Oh, no. Besides, the labor cost in the automation is going to go down. But they have subsidies. They have all kinds of things there. I got to calculate the fair cost. You got to do green sheet analysis of the real cost. Then you will see the difference. And we've got to do the analysis before I take my word for it. You take my word for it and show that what it is. Even then, even then, we've got to do the supply chain here. We've got to find ways to do that. And that's the whole purpose behind that. We alone cannot do that. Some maybe. We're buying pots and pans, we're buying the Ganesh we're buying a paper, I buy clothes. No, we've got to do that. And so that's the part we've got to put. So the other thing I have is we've got to announce a strategy, working with the business people, work it through. Go with the industry, don't go with the company. Get the list, work it through. Now it's coming to, to, the, to the Americans and Europeans and whoever else. We got to do target marketing by companies that whom we want to invite. We've got to show them why, what we have to have, what we need to do. So the industry needs to work with the government to do that. And pick five, six items, don't pick the whole thing. So this will build confidence going forward. I've got one more quick item. Somebody had a hand up. Yeah, help us. I better not run out of time because I have to have one more item. Why is the answer to localize the supply chains in India and not just pivot them to the, right. to the US, Europe, and Japan? Uh, hello. Oh, you say why not do it there? Yeah, you could. It will be globalization. The purpose I have is uh, in my, that's the viewpoint, that's not a fact. Our Indians do a great job in America. Why can't we do it here? I don't have to show that. You know what I'm talking about. So I meet I, them all I, the I time. Have one, one proposal. Just a second. Yeah. Why can't we do it here? It creates employment, you learn technology, you build it. I'm for it here, but if you want to do that's your privilege. I've got to do it here. Some things I may not be able to do, I can understand that. Some, please. Yeah. Uh, what I've seen here, for the consumer products, there are too much of fragmentation of industry. So what I'm calling is, 
defragmentation. If I start yes, with yes. defragmentation yeah. and unite them, sub hundred companies, give them a chance. Absolutely. So that was my second one that I took to yeah. the Home Minister some time ago. Yeah. And Thanks. that is we have some superb I mean I'm working with them now in India. I took them on. 200 million, 300 million. These people live and they make money and they, they, they go through tough, tough times. And so I have, have a, I'm not covering it here now, but I have a view how you get this thing really going for about a thousand companies. And they can do some of this stuff here in India. Yeah, please. Do you believe in trade barriers to solve the China problem? I'm, it's not a belief. If we have to do it, we will. They do are doing it. Oh, um, we, I just want to first do the cost analysis. And, and then if I have to do it, I will on those items. Well, I mean, that's one way to solve the problem. Because we know that they are cheaper than us. We know that they are better than us. No. Uh-uh. We can build if we put our money on it. I mean, item, labor on it. No. This is the belief we've got to discard. Because I see this. I go inside the factories and see that. They did that. They got experience curve. We don't have the experience curve right now. But the cost part, I won't accept that. Because you have not done the homework. So the talent that is available... Even, even if I were wrong. See, even if I were wrong, we got to find a way to do it. Even if I were wrong, we have to find a way to do it. So I'm saying if you put trade barriers, you will make... Yeah, yeah, more yeah. expensive, you automatically reduce the debt. Yeah, we'll do. But we want to do the cost analysis and figure this out. And then we go from there. But if I have to do it, I would. I'm not going away from it. That's my point there. I would do that. Some, somebody had it. The talent that is available with our IITs is not captured by the industry. There is no cooperation between industry and academia. In yeah, India. good point. So I want to shift a topic here. I didn't want to let it go. This point, I've talked to a number of people. In companies, I'm not talking India, talking America here, and India as well. We have two classes. People who get options and equity, and people who can't be paid only by cash. It's an economic class. We've got to eliminate this. And I'm now beginning to move and saying every qualified employee should be allowed to have the rewards in equity and cash. What do you guys think? Yeah. And second, the reason is the equity awards are a multiplier. I'm on a board. I get $200,000 a year in a stock. I have here 20,000 shares. I've got them for 20 years. Company stock price has gone up minimum 15% a year. I'm a millionaire. That's the multiplier. And the people have been 20 years, they do this stuff, and they don't get it. Their pride, their ability to do things, they begin to change. So I want you to think about how do we go about that particular, particular item to deal with the inequality of rewarding people. How, what do you guys think about the inequality? OK? Because I'm coming short of time here. Hello. So. Uh, so, here in the back. So, here in the back. Hi. Am I audible, sir? So, I think more than anything else, we need to work on, on human resource as well. Because there's a difference when it comes to the kind of quality education people are getting or the quality healthcare or before we even think of competing with other countries. Could you just tell me again what you say? Yeah, we should, but the idea I, I just toss out to you, there are people who do customer service for 10, 15 years. That's why you retain the customer. Why shouldn't they get rewarded for multiplier? That's my argument. They should get a multiplier effect. I'm saying qualified people. I didn't say everybody. They have a criteria for it. And so they deserve it. Why shouldn't they deserve it? So that was my last point there. So I have a, a counterpoint to that of providing equity to dilute inequality because 
I don't think it's a great idea because when you incentivize people by giving equity, at certain times, especially at the top ends, people end up doing wrong things to boost profitability in the short term to increase stock prices through which they uh, like. We know how to control that. Count on it. We know how to control that. That's a fraud. We'll figure this out. I've heard the argument, well, they will spend the money in gambling. I said, interesting. Don't trust your people. This isn't the American scene. A guy arguing with me. Why not, why not uh, instead of providing equity which dilutes it, get down to the profit, and once the profit is there, a portion is reserved for dividend, a portion for investment, and out of the remaining, why don't you give it to the Yeah, business? find some way they should share in the multiplier. That's the only thing. There's no other way I'm going to tell you. That's the only thing. Multiplier, find, find the way to do that. So, gentlemen, three things, ladies. One, think about this China thing very seriously. We should do supply chain here. Figure it out. I'm open for all kinds of things we have to do. We need to do the marketing to the companies from whom you need help, not just going the various kinds of uh, delegations. It has to be factual. We've got to target the companies, go there and see what we really want, which way. Second, your point of these, let me use the word SMEs, the family-owned companies. I'm working with them and saying they got everything. They need lend. They don't need lend. They need low-cost loans. And they need knowledge, access to the market. They can get the technology. That's my impression of the whole thing. And we can create a huge thing going forward. Start there, organize it, go. And third, find a way for qualified employees to get the multiplier. I have private companies in America, and you can do the research very clearly how their employees feel, what's their social side of it, and they actually give out the, 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 the multiplier effect going forward. Okay, very good. Three items. Think about China seriously. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.